has been a little too accurate lately. It hasn't been things that I'll Google or I talk about. It's been thoughts. TikTok knows everything about us. Hold up, don't scroll. Let me ask you something first. Can someone please explain how this algorithm works? TikTok users often wonder how the world's fastest growing social network seems to know them so well. TikTok secretly listening to us while we're watching videos. I don't know. The answer to how this app gets to know you so intimately is a highly secretive algorithm long guarded by TikTok's China-based parent company, ByteDance. TikTok has been so successful in terms of implementing their algorithms. TikTok's algorithm can influence the thinking of U.S. youth. To understand how it knows users so well, The Wall Street Journal created over 100 automated TikTok accounts, or bots, that watched hundreds of thousands of videos on the app. We also spoke to current and former executives at the company. Officially, the company says that shares, likes, follows, and what you watch all play a role in what TikTok shows you. We found that TikTok only needs one of these to figure you out, how long you linger over a piece of content. Every second you hesitate or rewatch, the app is tracking you. I just want to quiet the noise. Through this one powerful signal, TikTok learns your most hidden interests and emotions. The most important fucking factor is clout is the people's interest in clout tiktok took the facebook uh multi-billion dollar model of just opening up the fucking content faucet many of you are too young to remember this but i'm an old man and i uh i've been in the media for a long time now and part of the reason why i'm right here where i'm at in my career is because of Facebook. Because back in the day, in, you know, leading up to 2016, Facebook decided we're going to do videos on the platform. Like around 2015, 2016. So what they did was they opened up the fucking faucet and basically started auto-serving videos to everyone. Your feed was all videos full of videos and people pop the fuck off buzzfeed upworthy was a fucking massive content farm like every single legacy media operation decided to uh, decided to dump millions of dollars into their video content creation a unilad click hole video content creation strategies so they could make facebook videos now this is another one That's right around the time when I started doing the TYT Facebook content. The pivot to video. Those videos popped the fuck off. I was getting 30 million views a week. Insane. T uh, Facebook was certainly inflating the numbers. Certainly. But they also had a fuckload of people watching okay facebook was definitely inflating the numbers but so many people were watching it was all over the place and then they fucking shut the faucet off and it literally destroyed like every one of my friends got fucking fired they all lost their jobs they all had to fucking leave uh, the, you know, there's, there's no more video teams for so many of these media companies. And, and that is, that's the story. Facebook recognized that people would do everything in their power. If they had an opportunity, like big media companies, powerful media companies would do everything in their fucking power to get in front of that fucking tidal wave of content. TikTok is operating on a similar principle. They were like, this is good. If we, if we can let anyone on the planet become mega famous on any given moment and everybody wants to be famous, they will stay on this app. They will make free content on this app non-fucking-stop. So they basically started making every random person famous for a minute, for a brief moment. 
But this time, in the aftermath of Vine's success and failures, uh, when we were like 10 years in, 20 years into, you know, YouTube and internet content creators, there was another industry that was finally recognizing that like influencers can make a lot of money. So this time they were ready. So those famous people took advantage of, or the people that were getting famous took advantage of, uh, the, the algorithm super boost. Okay. They took advantage of the algorithm super boost and then immediately like, you know, agencies and, and clever managers immediately s just swiped them and turned around and, you know, diversified their content portfolio, made them make YouTube, made them make fucking Instagram accounts and shit like that. But that's why TikTok is so successful. From the, from the Vine era, you got like a handful of influencers. You got the Logan Pauls of the world and whatnot. You got the Cameron Dallas's, blah, blah, blah. Some of those people are not around anymore. From TikTok, because this time uh, the industry was aware and paying attention to it, you're going to have a lot more, in, you're going to have a lot more staying power on influencers. Why'd Facebook turn off the faucet? Um, they wanted to, they wanted to change the content strategy on the platform. They realized that it's like never going to be a competitor to YouTube. They were greatly lying about their, uh, numbers, their video numbers anyway. So they were just like, we need to go back to Facebook being like for friends. and drives you deep into rabbit holes of content that are hard to escape. The TikTok experience starts the same way for everyone. Open the app and you'll immediately see an endless string of videos in your For You feed. Take this new user, a 24 year old from Henry County, Kentucky. TikTok starts by serving the account a selection of very popular videos vetted by app moderators. Is this person religious? Because I still have a purpose and you still hold a plan for my life. Do they want to participate in viral dances? Are they feeling down lately? Just remember, I loved you once and that love goes for a friend, family, or any relationship. What TikTok doesn't know is that the 24-year-old from Kentucky isn't a person at all. It's one of the bot accounts programmed by the Wall Street Journal. Let's call it Kentucky 96. We set up these accounts to understand how TikTok figures out your unexpressed interests. We assigned each bot a date of birth and an IP address, which told TikTok their location. None were given a gender. We gave each bot or user interests, but those interests were never entered into the app. The only way our users expressed their interests was by re-watching or pausing on videos with related hashtags or images. Some were into extreme sports. Others were interested in forestry or dance or astrology. I'm not the babysitter, I'm not the parent. Or some other topic. Keep scrolling if you hate animals. For all our accounts, we found that TikTok draws users in at first by serving a wide variety of videos, many with millions of views. Then, as the algorithm sees what you respond to, the selection of videos and the view counts can get lower and lower, with fewer of them vetted by moderators to see if they violate TikTok's terms of service. We reviewed our experiment and its results with a data scientist, an algorithm expert, and Guillaume Chazlo, a former Google engineer who worked on YouTube's algorithm. He's now an advocate for algorithm transparency. He says TikTok is different from other social media platforms. The algorithm on TikTok can get much more powerful and it can be able to learn your vulnerabilities much faster. In fact, TikTok fully learned many of our account's interests in less than two hours. Summit figured out in less than 40 minutes. 
On YouTube, more than 70% of the views come from the recommendation engine. So it's already huge. But on TikTok, it's even worse. It's probably like 90, 95% of the content that is. That's why it's crack, boys. That's why it's fucking crack, dude. Straight up. It's so fucking good. The scene that comes from uh, the recommendation engine. This is a visualization made from hashtags attached to the videos our bots watched. So it's double booking, right? On the one hand, it makes you stay on the application because it's so easy to get recommended really cool videos off of like whatever it figured out you're interested in. On the other hand, because it has the power to like make anyone fucking mega famous for one moment. So many people are constantly uploading like dumb shit and funny shit. So a lot of people are on the app because they want to be content creators. They want to be influencers because everybody wants to be an influencer. And also on the other hand, a lot of them are on the application because they're like, oh, this shit is so good. Fucking mainlining it, you know? And uh, turns out the real devious lick is not getting like white American kids in fucking private schools to break their toilets. But the real devious lick was the algorithm after all. Think of it as a partial view of the universe of TikTok content. Here's where we find dance videos. Over here are the cooking videos. The spindly arms stretching out of the center represent niche content areas. This arm starts with general videos of cute animals. But if we follow it out to the end, we find more specific videos for enthusiasts of French bulldogs. As Kentucky 96 starts its journey, it starts moving around within the mainstream, where TikTok is trying to puzzle out what it wants. One time I had a thick TikTok blow up. I got so anxious I threw up and deleted it. <laughs> You threw up? Like, bleh, like, you threw up and you deleted the TikTok. That's hilarious. We programmed Kentucky 96 to be <laughs> interested in sadness and depression. Let's see how long it takes TikTok to figure that out. Life doesn't happen to you. Life happens for you. So if life is taking people away from your life and putting new ones in. Less than three minutes into using TikTok, at its 15th video, Kentucky 96 pauses on this. And that love goes for a friend, family, or any relationship. Kentucky 96 watches the 35 second Those video twice. Here, TikTok gets its first inkling that perhaps the new user goes. is feeling down lately. Whoever comes, let them come. Whoever stays, let them stay. Whoever goes, let them go. The information contained in this single video provided the app with important clues. The author of the video, the audio track, the video description, the hashtags. After Kentucky 96's first sad video, TikTok serves another one 23 videos later, or after about four more minutes of watching. I'll leave you alone from now on if that's what you want. This one is a breakup video with the hashtag sad. Bro, why does anybody watch? Yo, I just, I really am not a depressed guy, you know? My parents had one get 50k and my mom came to me like, what's going on with this? Please help. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm just not a depressed guy, I think. Like, I would never seek out this kind of content. Like, if I saw this, I would laugh at it and move on. I don't understand it. You know why I leave you alone? Because I care about your feelings more than mine. TikTok's still trying to suss out this new user with more high view count videos. Does the new user want to watch videos about friendship? But look at your material conditions. Man, depression is not like exclusive to your material conditions. Like just hella rich people are that are depressed as fuck. It's like, it's your brain, dude. It's, you know, shit going on up there. I also feel like there's depressed people that I don't understand. Like, do depressed people seek uh, sad TikToks? I don't think so. Or to laugh at funny fail videos. Nobody's going to know. They're going to know. You're just a poser emo. Wait, what? 
Or do they like videos about home repairs? Other information from your phone, including location, can impact the videos that are shown in a user's feed. As a Kentuckian, I never thought I'd lose my freedom over a virus. For instance, Kentucky 96 saw lots about Kentucky, but whether or not it keeps showing you that type of video depends on your response to it. A TikTok spokeswoman said the app does not listen to your microphone or read text messages to serve you personalized videos. At video 57, Kentucky 96 keeps watching a video about heartbreak and hurt feelings. And then, at video 60, watches one about emotional pain. Based on the video's... Dude, what the fuck? You would be surprised how many times a guy sits in his car, his room, or the bathroom, holding back tears because he's confused, hurt, or lost. He wants to give up. So here's the thing, dude. I do think that we just don't know what, what kind of... Like, we just don't know what kind of fucking brain poison this is. Maybe I'm old. But, like, I can't see this being healthy for the content creator. I cannot see this being healthy for the people that are seeking this kind of content. You know what I mean? It's like... Another banger from the TikTok user Sad Boy Cap. Yeah, like... That's terrible, dude. Especially if you're, like, 14, you know what I mean? And you're, like, in TikTok's main age demographic. And you're just, like... You're going through like hormonal changes and shit like that. You know what I mean? Nice stolen valor wearing Korea veteran hat. I'm a Korean veteran, bitch. Know your place. Oh, previously subscribed for two months. Fuck you. Okay, asshole. Um, so, show some respect. See, there's motherfuckers in here going, that's kind of true about men though, to be honest. Because he's confused, hurt or loss, he wants to give up. But when you see his face, he looks fine. He smiles and comfortable like nothing ever happened. Dude, I know. It's like relatable shit. It's like supposed to be relatable shit. So what's up? You're sad boy cap now? So you're just, you have to always be sad. You have to make sad content forever. Like, this is not deep. Okay. This is not a deep. Uh, it, it's not a deep cut in the way that you think this is. It's just not. It's really not that hard to understand. It's very easy to go into a depressive spiral if you're in one and seeking out validation and sameness in your depression as well. Yeah. And I feel like that's just like, I don't know. I, I can't see this being healthy for anybody. You're like, you're doing literally the opposite of touching grass. Okay. You are doing the exact opposite of touching grass. You're saying, fuck touching grass. I'm going to go... I'm going to spiral deeper into my fucking negative feedback loop. No pain. Based on the videos we watched so far, TikTok thinks that maybe this user wants to see more about love, breakups, and dating. So at about 80 videos and 15 minutes in, the app starts serving more about relationships. But Kentucky 96 isn't interested. Your voice, your smile, your eyes, your laugh. The user instead pauses on one about mental health. If a guy ever cries in front of you, do not let him leave ever. He will never trust any human ever the same. It's not funny. I'm not laughing at that. It's, it's real. Wow. As guys, we never get taught to never, we get taught to never show emotion because it would help us. It would help make us weak. Keep him. He trusts you. Then quickly swipes past videos about missing an ex. Say, I miss you and I like having you around. Advice about moving on and how to hold a lover's interest. He spends more time on his phone when he's around you. Kentucky 96 lingers over this video containing the hashtag depression. Something's wrong with me. 
and these videos about suffering from anxiety. It's like a reward. After 224 videos into the bots, kind of a chat thing to say to say touch grass in response to depression. Hey, dumbass. The response to depression isn't the just touch grass, okay? Touching grass could be helpful, but it's the touch uh, the grass of your fucking psychiatrist, okay? It's to touch mental health grass. It's to do the exact opposite of this. I'm not saying, oh, if you're depressed, just go fucking, you know, don't be depressed no more. That's clearly what I'm not saying. What I'm simply stating is that when you're depressed, I feel like going into this fucking rabbit hole that is going to only suck you deeper into depression by other dudes that may or may not be depressed that are literally now making money off of like pumping out content like this is probably not the best thing for your psyche or your mental health, okay? What we should be doing is getting people to go out and touch grass, getting people to go out and touch the grass in their uh, psychiatrist's office, like I said already, and uh, seeking mental health and uh, at least like positive influences in their lives that break through that fucking negative loop. Overall journey or about 36 minutes of total watch time. TikTok's understanding of- I think these cringe depression TikToks are the same thing as listening to sad music when you're upset, probably negligible if not positive for them. Um, I mean, I don't know. I've never like, I've only been depressed uh, one time in my life. So I'm very fortunate. So I can't speak on it. So I don't know. I'm older than you by a few years and I don't understand why anything on TikTok is interesting. Anyone is an age thing. Sad music and poetry exist since ages. Don't be such a zoomer. Wait, what? Seeing a doctor is a privilege. I know, man. I know. Fuck it then. I shouldn't recommend it. You're right. Seeing a doctor is a privilege. Therefore, I should not recommend it because that's like classist of me. Yeah, don't go to the emergency room. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. I feel like listening to sad music... Listening to sad music... And, you know, sad poetry and stuff like that. People like recanting their experience, recounting their experiences. That sort of stuff, I feel like is a little bit different than like people that are like m literally fucking hammering like sad moments in your life. It's like another human that's directly telling you like, I don't know. Kentucky 96 takes shape. Videos about depression and mental health struggles outnumber those about relationships and breakups. From here on, Kentucky 96's feed is a deluge of depressive content. 93% of videos shown to the account are about sadness or depression. Bro, come on, bro. That shit is crazy. That's not good, dude. That You can't tell me that's healthy, dude. People been looking at me. I'm just like, what you looking at? A TikTok spokeswoman said that some of the remaining 7% of videos are to help the user discover different content. But for Kentucky 96, such videos were few and far between. The majority of videos it was shown outside of its depressive rabbit hole were ads. A TikTok spokeswoman said that the simulated activity generated by the Wall Street Journal's bots is not representative of real user behavior because humans have a diverse set of interests. But even some of our accounts with diverse interests my hot take is like, I would just ban talking about mental health on the internet by unqualified people. Like, I'm, I'm so anti-freedom of speech when it comes to that stuff. I'm, I'm, like, I'm half kidding, but like, oh my God, dude. I feel like it, it is like created a system in which like there are people that are like faking disassociative diseases and or disorders and shit like that. Like, like it, it's, it's giving you the thing you seek the most, which is like clout, okay? It's really addictive. And then people are just like, oh, that must be me. You know what I mean? Instead of like growing through it, instead of experiencing the growing pains, you're just like, oh no, this is me. And now not only is it me, but it's now a part of my personality, actually. And the, the, way, I, the way I show the rest of the world who I am. Oop, now I'm actually building a following off this. That's crazy. This fetishized depression and mental illness is a personality. Yeah, but you laugh though. That that thought's sad. 
Man, shut up, Dr. Birthday. Happy birthday, bitch. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Sad. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not an expert. Talk to your doctor if you're uncomfortable with how you feel. Rabbit hold. We showed our data and many of the videos seen by Kentucky 96 to Shazlo. Oh, hit verified tweet Mad Lib. Yeah, this is like this is the tweet that made me follow this motherfucker. Oh, they deleted the main tweet. What the fuck? I saw a TikTok about how normal thing in a childhood is a sign of word they just learned, and I can't stop thinking about it. I saw a TikTok about how playing dodgeball in childhood is a sign of what? Yeah, it's just like I saw TikTok about how a man saying hi to a child is a is a sign of in childhood is a sign of fucking blah 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 trauma and I can't stop thinking about it. It's always like some fucking trauma. I've talked about this before. We've like hyper medicalized everything too. Like people don't just fucking lie. People don't just like lie anymore. Everybody's gaslighting. Like it's supposed to sound something different. Like it's supposed to mean something different. Everybody has post-traumatic stress disorder. Like they're not just like dis they don't just experience discomfort. They're not uncomfortable. They're literally fucking experiencing trauma in every moment. Okay. And it's so strange to me. Like I, I feel like I'm getting old. And, and I feel like maybe that's why I look at it differently. Maybe the next generation is just like, this is it. We're just absolutely going to see everything from like extreme terms. And that it's going to be, you know, every, everyone's neurodivergent and everything is going to be, is everyone kind of is neurodivergent. Sorry. It's just the truth. Everyone's got some shit going on and I know that that or neuro atypical I guess not neurodivergent um and then and then everything is like hyper medicalized and I don't know I don't know how that's going to I'm engaging in so I'm engaging in self-comforting behavior currently as I'm talking about an uncomfortable subject to you right now I'm comforting myself I'm picking up my skin as I'm talking about a subject that is uncomfortable for me to talk about because I know that there will be a lot of trauma response from people who are neurodivergent, who will misunderstand the point I'm trying to make, and you know, uh, and and uh, disability Twitter will fucking be up my asshole. You know what I mean? It's like everything. And then putting it on a fucking content spaceship. Putting it on a fucking content spaceship makes it so much worse, too. You know? The original was reading in disassociation. Being anxious doesn't mean you have anxiety. Being sad doesn't mean you have depression. Being a perfectionist doesn't mean you have OCD. Yes, I agree. OCD is like very rarely about that. You got to remember that some of these young kids learn to use the internet during COVID. And there's no escape. Chronically online kids are fucking wild. I mean, I know I have some chronically online kids in here. I feel responsible for their behavior a little bit. And I try to like make sure that they're not turning into these like fucking annoying little nerds who can't shut the fuck up about like every little thing and then like lose their fucking minds over like every little minute thing. Like, what do I always talk about? The human beings are complex and, and we all have issues. Most importantly, we all have privileged blind spots, including the young fucking little 14 year old, uh, Minecraft Twitter stands or whatever fucking standum that people are a part of. Like,
I think it's because as a society, we've ignored and mistreated people with these things so long. There's so much untreated shit out there that's been normalized. <sighs> I've talked about this before. Like, on the one hand, I feel like... Um, I feel like we have medicalized mental illness... When, um, or at least according to Foucault, when it was something to be fascinated by, that uh, people were uh, vibrant personalities that then became, uh, you know, illnesses to be treated. But also on the other hand, while we're still doing that, while, while we're still doing that, every, everything is now becoming hyper-medicalized. But also simultaneously, we are literally like, beaming at motherfuckers who are demonstrating mental illness on the timeline. Like, we can't look away. We're, like, fascinated by it. Rogan sounding take? I mean, the take that I'm referencing is not my own. Foucault molest the kids? He's French, bro. Come on. What else is new? Wow, a French philosopher molested children? That's crazy. What's next? Did the Pope did that too? Is that, is, that your, is that your fascinating revelation in the chat, dude? What the fuck? No way. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, dude. Wow, that's wild. No way, dude. Next, you're going to tell me every white Western philosopher was a gigantic racist, and I'm going to be shocked. I'm going to be shocked. I will be shocked if you tell me that. This would be very, very strange. Speaking from privilege, Hassan? Yeah, I am. Anyway, let's keep going. What we see on TikTok is a bit the same that what we saw on YouTube. So basically the algorithm is detecting that this depressing content is useful to create engagement and pushes depressing content. So the algorithm is pushing people towards more and more extreme content so it can push them toward more and more uh, watch time. TikTok also says it allows you to see less of something by selecting the not interested button. But Chaslow says that's not enough. The algorithm is able to find the piece of content that you're vulnerable to, that will make you click, that will make you watch. But it doesn't mean you really like it, and that's the content that you're, you enjoy the most. It's just the content that's the most likely to make you stay on the platform. Our bots only escaped rabbit holes when we changed their viewing interests. When we told one bot to stop watching videos about ADHD, the algorithm cut back on that content. Still, many of the journal's bots were rapidly pushed deep into rabbit holes. TikTok learned our bots' most far-flung interests, like astrology. But even bots with general mainstream interests got pushed to the margins as their recommendations got more personalized and narrow. Bots with an interest in sexual content wound up way out here, watching hashtag KingTok videos about sexual power dynamics. Daddy. And our bot with a general interest in politics wound up being served videos about election conspiracies and QAnon. Businesses. Impeach. I wonder how that happened, dude. That's crazy. Bro, I swear to God. Like, every everyone on the right is just, they don't have a job, okay? I hate to say it. I hate to break it to you, but like, literally every single person on the right just has never had a job okay they just don't they literally can't they physically can't have a job while also polluting the airwaves with like user generated content to the degree that they do i refuse to believe it right wingers have never had a job okay no shot these motherfuckers are everywhere i don't know how they make their money like I don't know what it is. Like lefties have jobs at Megalol. No, I think they do. I think I think left wingers have too much time. Uh, they're they're spending too much time working to make fucking TikToks.
Biden and Kamala. He goes from the House to the Senate. You can tell me that guy has a job, dude? No shot. Bro, if they have jobs, how the fuck are they literally flying all around the country going to protest all day, every day? How are they doing that? Like how? What are they doing? Are they, are they in MLMs, dude? Are they doing multi-level marketing schemes and shit? Like how the fuck? They work at churches and that's a fact? Okay, abolish churches. Got it. Deep in the niche worlds of TikTok, users are more likely to encounter potentially harmful content that is less vetted by moderators and violates the app's terms of service. Make them angry and sad. They would be so much happier without you. A TikTok spokeswoman said that the company catches a lot of banned content, which passes through both computer analysis and human moderators. It also reveals- How the fuck y'all be 13, 15, looking 18, what jeans you got? Why didn't I urge to tell my grandma? What the fuck? What the fuck? Every one of these videos is so sus, dude. Use videos reported by users. Don't tell them goodbye. Just go. It's night, night time. <laughs> There's a lot of fun, silly, and life-affirming content on TikTok. But while TikTok can draw out what makes you laugh, you don't need to be. It can also make you wallow in your darkest thoughts. Turning the pain from mental to physical work. Without ever needing to eavesdrop on you or collect any personal information about you. I've never attempted suicide or anything. I've never let it get that far. Whether it's on TikTok, on Facebook, on YouTube, we're interacting with algorithm uh, in our everyday life more and more. We are training them and they're training us. Uh, so we have to study this so we understand it better and we don't let it go in directions that are harmful to society or to certain groups of people. Dude, I don't even fucking, I, I don't know how to like, I don't know how to get, a, get off of that. Like it just like broke, it broke my brain completely, dude. You know? <laughs> good thing is this, good thing this app is for literally babies. Holy shit, no. Oh, I missed, I skipped it. I can't find it. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>